Hi, I want to make a quick video here on uh, uh, Windows Defender for Endpoint Live Response. I've been uh, working with this a little bit, and I wanted to make something quick uh, to hopefully help others jumpstart their uh, use of it. So inside of Defender, we have something called Live Response. Um, if you go down into um, Settings, go to Endpoints, Inside of there, go to advanced features and turn on all these live response uh, features. Um, I think that's all you got to do, but there's a checklist. I'll link it in the description. Turn all these on. And then once the um, Defender agent on the box receives those changes and notifies the back end, then you'll be able to do live response on these boxes. So let's jump over here to a machine in my lab so you can see kind of some of the stuff you can do. So inside devices, we're going to jump down to one of my servers that uh, I've been messing with. So here's a page, the device page. Now, if you go over here, click on the three little dots, initiate live response session. So this, in essence, essentially creates a uh, a console shell on the remote endpoint where you can send commands to it. Now the MDE live response uh, console doesn't use all the standard console commands you have. It's a very truncated list of things that you can do. And if you want to do things, you have to do it in a very specific way. So something like Dir is one of them that you can do. But you can't run things like route print. It'll tell you. It's not known. So um, if you wanted to do something like, for example, um, look at a route table on a machine, you have to do those kind of things through the running of a PowerShell script, which means you have to first upload the script. Um, so, but you can, you know, like you could do like change directory. Uh, now you can't do tab. You have to type everything out because tab simply literally just tabs you out of the console session. So everything you do here is going to have to be uh, typed out longhand. So let's first, I want to show you how I've been using it. I'm going to upload a file here. It's called net test. Um, so network test is a description. It's the first time I'm doing it, so I don't need to overwrite it. Confirm. And this is going to basically copy from my machine here up to this endpoint and make this script available. And I can see it available by just typing the command library. So in the library, I see a few things, other things I've uploaded. One of them is net test plural, and one of them is net test. And this is the one I want, net test. So now that my file is on the endpoint, I can actually use it. The way I do that is I say run net test and make sure you type it correctly because it is case sensitive. All right, now I am running my net test. So let's take a look at what net test is. It's a very generic thing. Now this stuff at the top, I was just grabbing a, a date format in case I wanted to have unique names. But that's coming out right now. So I do a get date, stick that in before I do other things. Resolve DNS name, do a, a test net connection, I pull uh, net adapter information, and I pull the net route through PowerShell. Okay, so I can see here that it has run. It's uh, it'll create a log file of it running, and I can see where that log file is. Now, if I do library again, I don't see my output file, and that's because the output of this is not in the same place as... Uh, well, that's not true. It is in the same place as these, but uh, it is not known... Uh, by uh, MDE. The MDE is aware that these files have been uploaded and are part of the library, but 
it's not actually doing a dir. It's showing you what is in the library of the stuff you've uploaded. So you have to go to the the directory, and you can see here the path of where the log file was written, which is um, part of the path where the output file is written. So C program data, Microsoft Windows Defender Advanced Threat Protection. So I'm going to try and copy this, even though I've had limited luck with that. Um, and I wonder how much of these, yep, yeah, CD, C colon, and I need to actually put that in quotes. No, I don't. C colon backslash program data. Okay, so I'm going to try and uh, paste the remainder of this path because it is a lot to type. Let's see how lucky I am. Okay, good. So inside of this, let's look and see what those directories are. There's a few directories, and one of them is called download. Downloads. So downloads is where it puts the files um, when you use this here. When you upload a file, it sticks them here in downloads. Now, the it, when it runs, it, it actually creates a log file over here in temp. But if you're outputting a file, and it should give it a specific path, it's going to um, create the output file where the file exists, and that's in downloads. So let's go over to downloads. And I'm going to do a dir, and I hope to see my uh, txt file I created. Okay, here it is, nettest.txt. So I want that file. So what I'm going to do is say get file net test.txt and if I typed it right it's going to pull the file local here in my browser and I'm going to be able to review it all right here we go there it is okay and you can see here what I've done is I've gone out and I added a timestamp I looked up who Google was I confirm I can do DNS and resolution I do a, a test connection to it. Um, then I'm pulling some information off of the network adapters. Um, and I'm looking here at the route table as well. So I can use the um, interface index number to see which one of these, you know, is associated with that interface. And obviously, you know, you can make this pull whatever information you want. This was just a quick way of doing that. Anyway, hopefully um, this short little um, insight on how I'm using it here in my lab is helpful. Um, and as I learn more uh, tricks, I will, I will share them. If you have any questions, let me know.